Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeremy Britton, the 24-Hour Wealth Coach. You're about to see me on the Online Prosperity Show, and I'm about to show you how to get millions of dollars, be really happy, and get a copy of this book. So make sure you tune in, watch the show, learn some stuff, write some things down. Talk to you soon. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And this morning, we brought to you the wealth coach, Jeremy. Jeremy, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Prosper. Fantastic. Now, obviously, um, if you're watching this show right now, you would appreciate that we're always bringing in experts in their own realm, people that know a thing or two about um, you know, something that they're coaching or the clients that they actually help. And as you would know, even the world's greatest athletes also need a coach. You might know of Michael Jordan. You might have heard of Tiger Woods. They may be the best in their respective uh, fields, but they actually take advice from somebody else. So that's the reason why when it comes to health, when it comes to money, and when it comes to legacy, that we need people that actually know what they're talking about. And why not bring in a wealth coach that will help us so that we can actually have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Now, um, Jeremy, thank you so much for being on the show today. Tell us a little bit about what you do and how you actually help people, um, you know, there as the 24 hour coach. Well, I started my first business when I was 19. I thought I was clever at school. And, um, you know, you think you're clever, you think you can actually run the show and you don't need a boss. But of course, I didn't have street smarts. I had a good academic education, but I didn't have street smarts. So my first business crashed and burned. That was a financial planning business. And then I needed to go away and learn a few things and then come back and started another business. And I started the, the second business. And that lasted for a year and a half before that one crashed and burned because I was, I was getting better. And I made lots of mistakes and I kept starting more businesses. And eventually I, I, had, you know, I, I learned from my mistakes. I got better, I got street smarts, and I got mentors. And I think that's a, that's a very important thing. That's why I'm in coaching now. I actually sold my last business in 2010. And since then, I've been consulting with other business owners. Because it doesn't matter what sort of business you're in. Like I had five financial planning businesses and six retail businesses. And whether you're accounting, financial planning, whether you're selling trucks or you know, selling food or whatever it is, You've always got business, you've always got suppliers, you've always got customers, and you've always got a product or service that you're giving to them. So fundamentally, every business is basically the same. There's just little differences, little nuances in each business. But I can coach a business where I have no idea about how they do their business because the fundamentals are the same. And behind every business, there's a person who's running the business. And if the person isn't upskilled, if the person doesn't have the right mindset, then they're going to have problems in their business. So a lot of business coaching is actually life coaching. And the analogy that I draw for this prosper is, you know, you see someone driving down the road, you see someone who's driving, say, a red Ferrari, and you've got an immediate judgment about what kind of person they are. If they're driving a ute with a dog in the back and a hay bale in the back, you've got an immediate judgment about what kind of a person they are. Because their, their car is an outward reflection of who they are as a person and who they think of themselves. And when a business owner comes to me and says, you know, I've got problems with my staff, I've got problems with my suppliers, I've got problems with this, then that's showing up as an outward reflection as the kind of person that they are. And so I get personal with them. If they say they've got problems with their staff, they've got problems with their suppliers, I ask them, how's your home life? How's your marriage? How's your relationship with your kids? Because those kind of problems come back to communication. They come back to priorities. If you're not communicating well with your staff, or your suppliers, then you're not going to get good results and you're not going to get good results in your family unless you actually work on your communication skills. So again, the, the business becomes more of what you are and it doesn't matter how much money you, you make, you're going, to be, you're going to be having problems unless you actually work on yourself at the same time. Understandable. Thank you so much for that insight. So you did mention, um, you know, when you started, you went through... A series of failures and um, but you kept bouncing back on just touching on your own personal um you know you know motivation there what what kept you going knowing that you were gonna fail or you had just failed but you kept um you know coming back in again what what was driving you there 
I think, you know, you, you see other people who are succeeding and it's, it's like a baby learning to walk. You know, a baby's crawling around on the floor and it sees all its aunts and uncles and cousins walking. And so it goes, I want to walk too. And it gets up and it takes a couple of steps and then it falls down. And it gets some encouragement, you know. It might hurt itself, it might cry, but it gets some encouragement, maybe a clap or a kiss or something like that. And so it gets up and tries again, gets up and tries again. So when I see someone else who's having an awesome life, I want to have that awesome life, you know. And most people who, who started out like I did as an employee working for someone else, I, I heard a statistic the other day that 84% of Australians hate their job. They don't look forward to Mondays. Oh, wow. It's more than three quarters of people who don't enjoy doing what they're doing. And yet a lot of the bosses of these businesses are quite happy to go to work. You know, if they've got the right mindset, they're doing what they love doesn't matter whether they're making $10 million or $1 million or $100 million. They're doing what they love, then they're happy. And they have freedom. And they have emotional freedom. They look forward to Monday mornings. Understandable. So during the course of you, you know, figuring out your, your way around the business realm, you enlisted a couple of mentors and you enlisted a few coaches that were, um, you know, helping you along the way. How crucial is actually having a third eye looking at your business, um, especially in, in, in the finances and also just in the self-development, um, you know, phases, is it for somebody who is, you know, starting and trying to scale a business? I mean, it's, it's absolutely crucial, Prosper. You know, we were talking before about the, the baby getting up and learning to walk, but you don't know how, how far the baby can walk, how fast the baby can walk, because Hussein Bolt was once a little kid taking his first steps. And he didn't know how fast he could run. You've got to get someone to push you. So I, I had one of my clients who had four kids. And he was making okay money. He was doing okay. But he had a fifth baby on the way, which meant that he had to buy a bigger car and he needed some more money. And he contacted me and said, okay, sh show me how to make some more money. And I looked at what he was doing. He was spending a lot of time. He couldn't really increase his time. He couldn't put any more hours. So first of all, we looked at reducing his hours significantly so he could spend some more time with his family and then looking at ways where he could actually make more money in less time. Now, over a, a period of a few months working with this guy, we actually doubled his income. And he was like, mate, fantastic. Thank you very much. That's awesome. You know, I'll see you later. And I went, hang on, hang on a second. I don't know if you're just going to be a fast runner or if you're going to be the Olympic gold medal champion. Let's see what else we can do. So he pushed him again, and in one month, he doubled his income again. And he was like, oh, my God, this is fantastic. My wife's deliriously happy. We've got so much money now. I'm home more because I'm only working six hours a day rather than eight hours a day. And I said, hang on a second, hang on a second. Because I didn't know how fast he could run. He didn't know how fast he could run. And we pushed him again. And in one more month, he doubled his income again. I literally don't know how successful you can be. And I'm not talking to you, Prosper, I'm talking to the people watching this. I don't know how successful you can be. You know, Richard Branson didn't know he was Richard Branson 20, 30 years ago. You know, these guys didn't know. Warren Buffett, who's like one of the second or third richest men in the world right now, he made 99% of his fortune after he was 50 years old. Now, the first 49 years of his life was just building and building and building. He didn't know how big he could be. So having a coach there behind you, just pushing you. And anyone who's had a personal trainer will say, oh, do 10 push-ups. And then they do 10 and he goes, okay, two more, two more, two more. Because you don't know how many you can do until someone's there actually showing you a new technique or just pushing you a little bit further than what you thought you could do. Understandable. And that was a really good reference there um, as it also inspires. I actually have um, a big drawing on Warren Buffett. He made only 400,000 when he was 34 and I'm 34 right now and I'm slowly getting there. So you never know. It's, 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 it's working. So looking at what you've just said there, um, obviously clearly you are saying that no one ever got fit by joining the gym. You could have the best trainer or the coach out there, but if you're not putting in the work, like you say, that you're not doing the extra mile, um, you know, it's, it's not going to turn out perfectly for you. How important then is it that once you've gotten or enlisted that mentor to really actually, um, you know, learn as much as you can and also strive and push yourself because some people will just anticipate having a coach that's their beat and end all of what they have to do. 
I one of the like I, I worked with a lot of people, and obviously I was, I was telling the sto story of Michael before, where he doubled his income and then doubled his income and then doubled his income again. Not everybody gets that result. I can't guarantee that everybody I work with is going to quadruple their income. But he was just one of the guys who took on all the tips. There's a lot of people who, when I say, okay, you need to cut back your hours because you don't see Richard Branson putting in a 20-hour day. You don't see Warren Buffett putting in a 20-hour day. And some people will resist that because they grew up like I did as an employee. And as an employee, the more hours you put into the office, the more money you're going to make. But you need to change your thinking because an entrepreneur thinks differently to a business owner. A business owner thinks differently to an, to an employee. So you need to actually change the mindset and then you can change the strategies. So I give similar strategies to a lot of people. And Michael was one who just took it on board and went, okay, I'll do that. And I said, do this. And he goes, okay, I'll do that. I said, do this. And he goes, okay, I'll do that. And he never asked a question. Never said, why am I doing this? What do I have to do this for? What if I try it like this? I actually said to him one day, like, mate, you never question anything that I say to you. You never question me. He said, well, I'm paying for you, you for your advice. I would be crazy not to do what you said. I went, okay. <laughs> and he, he was one of my most successful clients in that regard because he just took on the stuff and went, okay, I'm going to do it. Whereas a lot of people will question it. They'll second guess it. I'll have their cheap days and I'll go, oh, I'm going to get some other advice from my friends and family, but the friends and family are less successful than they are or putting in more hours or making less money. And they may sometimes ignore the advice of their coach. That's why a lot of people will get a personal trainer, a lot of people join the gym, but not every single one of us is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Not every single one of, of the girls is Miss Universe yeah, because they make excuses and they stop taking the advice of those people. But it depends how far you want to go. Like he had a motivation, he had an extra baby on the way, and I had a little bit of a motivation because I wanted to push him and see how far he'd go. I literally didn't know whether he was a world champion or whether he was just another guy. So it's just saying, okay, do you want to represent your country? Do you want to represent the world? How far do you want to go? Cool. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Now, obviously, um, just to quote the Dalai Lama, and um, he, he said a lot you know, about quantum physics, but... There's something that really struck me about what you mentioned earlier on. Um, and the Dalai Lama says that everything is connected. So by it being connected like that, um, you mentioned something like, you know, if, if, if people's outward uh, projection is not working, it's probably because of the communication that's lacking within their business, um, you know, um, maybe with their clients, with their suppliers, and also, you know, within themselves. How do you then help people to cement, um, you know, their communication skills so that they uh, eventually have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Yeah. It, it took me a long time to realize. And um, in, my, in my 20s and 30s, I was working in financial planning and I just thought it was all about the money. You know, I, I worked really hard. I worked a lot of hours and I was just chasing the next dollar, the next dollar, the next dollar. And I was buying shiny things and you know, really having a great old time, but I was, I was never there for my family. And because I was working so many long hours, I didn't take care of my health. So, you know, I was, I was eating the wrong things. I was drinking the wrong things. I was putting too many hours in the office, not enough time concentrating on my health. I was, I was 33. I was younger than you when I had a heart attack. And it took me, I, I had a few months off work and I had to have heart surgery and this sort of stuff. And I had to sit back and sort of look at my life and say, what's, what's really important? Is it really important to have, have the seven-bedroom mansion and have the four cars and have the overseas holidays, that sort of stuff? Or is it more important for me to spend time with my family, spend time with my young kids? Because I didn't know if I was going to die. Like, I might have had another heart attack and, and then carved it. So looking at, you know, spending time with my family and focusing on that and downsizing my lifestyle, um, I went from working 76 hours a week to working 24 hours a week because I wanted to work from nine till three so I could knock off and spend time with the kids. That's how I became the 24 hour wealth coach because I was working six hour days, four days a week and spending time with my kids. But the interesting thing is like, I thought my lifestyle was going to downsize because you know, you cut your working hours by 60%, your income is going to drop by 60%, correct? But it didn't. This is the interesting thing. My mindset had changed, my priorities had changed, and I aligned myself with other people who also thought there was more to life. And the interesting thing is the people who, who pursue their health and they pursue their relationships, they do end up having a lot of financial freedom as well. So changing myself on the inside changed my outside world. And of course, I was a lot happier 
and spending a lot more quality time and, and building relationships and things like that. And the, the interesting thing is that, you know, I can't get money from my bird. I can't get money from my dog. I can't get money from the trees or the buildings. The only way I can get money is from people. People have the money. People can give me the money. So if I provide enough value to the people, then the money is going to flow towards me. Uh, I, I got business coaches, I got mentors and this sort of stuff as, as far as you know, strategy and technique. But a very important period of my life was spent hanging around with Tibetan Buddhist monks, hanging around with a lama, um, you know, learning meditation, learning hypnotherapy, learning the ways to change my mindset and change my brain and seeking happiness and relaxation and inner peace. Because if you've got a million dollars and you're lying on, the, lying on the operating table having heart surgery, you're not freaking happy. But if you've got inner peace and you've got $5, then you are happy. Understandable. Well, you do raise a valid point there because, you know, as humans, we are always seeking material wealth instead of really seeking out the things that really fulfill us, um, you know, as humans, um, which basically ends up being actually really contributing to the greater humanity, you know, which... Um, a lot of us here tend to believe because you're here to live, you're here to learn, you're here to contribute. So the more you you live out of that life, the more you have lessons presented to you that you learn, and then you contribute by teaching other people, which is exactly um, how you seem to be living your life, um, a life of contribution there. And also, I mean, there's uh, books like Think and Grow Rich, um, which also really you know accentuate this uh you know what you've just mentioned you know that your primitive and natural human 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 desires they're they're just what we're wired to like you know all this mm. money and desire for money and success is something we have to sort of acquire so how then do you you know help people um, get into that sort of mind frame, um, you know, even though the lizard brain is just wired to want sex and food and homoestasis. <laughs> there, there, there's an interesting thing. If, if we had a little, a little whiteboard, I could write it up for you. But, um, you know, for, for me, I, I made lots of money and I lost my health and my physical health and I lost my emotional health with my relationships. And there's a way of writing the word illness and the word wellness. And if you take away the ends of the words, illness is a focus on the I. I'm focusing on I, and I'm going to get ill. And wellness is when you focus on the we. Focus on the we, contribution that you can make to society, that's where you get wellness. So wealth for me in my, in my early 20s, early 30s, was all about the money. And then after the heart attack, wealth to me was, you know, what can I give, who can I be, Health is wealth, you know, amazing relationships and that sort of stuff. But wealth is a, is a very loaded term. It's not just, if you look up the dictionary, it's not just about the money. I, even prosperity, you know, it says in the good book, I, I wish you prosperity even as your soul prospers. So it's about growth. It's about contribution. And like, like I gave before the example with Michael, you know, doubling and tripling his income. Um, you know, he could actually do that because he was motivated by his own family. Now, my, my kids are grown up now, so I've got less motivation to feed my kids, just the motivation to feed myself. Um, but, of course, as we all know, yeah, Oprah, Oprah started a school in Africa because she wanted to contribute. She doesn't have any of her own kids. And I thought, well, I I'm, I'm don't have $9 billion like Oprah Winfrey does, but what if I just adopt a little orphanage in, in Zimbabwe, you know? And what if I just start feeding the kids there and teaching the kids entrepreneurial lifestyle rather than just being um, subsistence farming? What about growing some more crops and selling those crops in the community? And so within four years, um, between my wife and myself, we'd actually sponsored 100,000 ch children in Zimbabwe. And that's been eight or nine years now. So we're now up over 200,000 kids. And so waking up in the morning, I'm not thinking about how can I get another Ferrari for myself? I'm thinking about how can I feed these kids? How can I educate those kids so they learn English rather than just speaking their native language? Because if they speak their native language, no offence, but they're going to be working, you know, out on the farms and things like that. If they learn English, they can go into the city, they can get jobs, they can use the internet, they can, they can access the global community and access global businesses. And if they have an entrepreneurial mindset rather than just feeding themselves, they can contribute to the rest of the world as well. And that's going to make them feel really good. 
having a million dollars doesn't make you feel really good until you start giving some of it away and you start seeing the impact that you can have in other people's lives. And that's where the real fun comes in. Absolutely beautiful, man. I'm proof positive that if you teach a kid a little bit of English, they would soar out and, and reach, reach their highest potential, you know? Um, I'm not quite sure if you've seen the, the episode that I did on Channel 9 where I was talking about, you know, my, my story and my journey coming through from, from Zimbabwe and, you know, how having had somebody help me along the way um, has actually made this tremendous difference. So thank you mm. out of everybody else that you absolutely helping. I really appreciate you for, <clears throat> for what you're doing there. Okay. So My in the future. event that maybe some people might also want to contribute and help you with your cause or also learn from you and you know, your passion, your zeal and everything else that you're putting out there. How can people get, um, what's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, uh, Jeremy? Uh, people can jump onto my website. It's number two, number four, H O U R. So 24 hour wealth coach. And um, through, through my website, they can access me. They can book into my calendar. They can send me an email. There's also a lot of material on Facebook. There's over 300 videos on YouTube. I give a lot of motivational, inspirational advice, um, share some meditations and some mindset changing things. There's, there's a lot of free stuff on there. Um, and I do tend to give away copies of my books. I do tend to give away a lot of videos and, and guided meditations and things like that to help people to go to the next level. Because when you go to the next level and you can start to contribute to other people, the more you give out, the more it flows back to you as well. So it becomes a self-perpetuating thing. Understandable. I do appreciate that last sentiment that the more you give, the more you actually get to keep. Just like me and you right now, we've given off of our time. And we get to keep this because it's recorded. Had you just stayed in your office or had I just stayed in my office right now, that time would never be um, accounted for. So for that, I absolutely appreciate your time. Now, I just thought I'd ask you this out of the blue. Obviously, a lot of people get really muddled and confused about money and what it really stems for. And considering there's new currencies that are really cryptic that people don't quite understand. They didn't understand the older money before. And now this is all yet another um, you know, um, language that they're meant to be speaking. Obviously, mm -hmm. money is just made and it's not just made you know and money is, is just a made up sort of phenomenon especially made mm -hmm. up by humans and it's just an idea right and it was invented yep. by yet another guy who's probably like you and me um just to enable you know the transfer of goods and services and um for those people that have been getting mortgages like us you can just know that money is just figures on the screen or just a piece of paper and a bit of metal that is thrown around with no intrinsic value, especially if you're Zimbabwean, you'd understand what I'm talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> and then for you to actually create wealth or some sort of value, um, you know, you know, people tend to seek to accumulate money, but there really is more value yeah. for you to actually give it out. And the more, you know, unreal value that you get from people saying thank you. And because of you, I did not give up. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the best feelings in the world. So I do really appreciate you for your time and also, you know, your expertise and giving us access to you so that people can get a hold of you um, when they need to learn from you. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for your time today. Thank you. Mate, I'd, I'd like to send you one of my books and anybody who's listening to this as well, if they want to contact me there and, and just, this, this is the mindset book. I've written a book about the money. Uh, my first book was how to make millions of dollars on your own without using a financial planner and explains a lot of those currency terms and a lot of those things very, very basically. Um, but the second book I wrote was about the mindset. And the third book I wrote was all about health and wellness and fasting, juice fasting, water fasting and meditation and things like that. So changing the mindset, very, very important because once you change your mind, you can do amazing, amazing things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that. Really nice gesture. And if you're watching this show right now, this is the time you want to subscribe to this channel because obviously you'd never really get, um, you know, people that are this generous uh, and, you know, willing to give off of their time willingly anywhere else. Thank you so much, Jeremy, once again. <laughs> that was special. Thank you.